You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, Litecoin, and more. Cryptocurrencies and other digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity. Provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments on everything from coins to tokens, futures, and even OTC options. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on the Crypto Rundown. This program is brought to you by Genesis Volatility, also known as GVOL, home of institutional-grade crypto options analytics. Whether you're trading CFI options or DeFi options, cryptocurrencies move. Use GVOL Analytics to analyze implied volatility, model realized volatility, structure positions, and unlock alpha. For more information, visit GVOL.io. That's G-V-O-L dot I-O. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody. That music means we are back. Once again, it is time for the Crypto Rundown, the program here on the Options Insider Radio Network, where we explore the goings-on in the world of crypto. Going to look at some ETH, some Bitcoin, the SKU, the volatility the OI, the unusual activity, and a whole bunch more. My name is Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as, of course, on the aforementioned network, reminding all of you out there, if you like what you hear on your on-demand devices, please continue to rate and review. You can also do so for those of you who like our app via the app stores for iOS and Android as well. All those new reviews do help the flood of new people who are continuing to discover the network. And speaking of new folks, I know there's a lot of you out there who just discover this show and you're kind of new to the world of options. Maybe you're just listening to the Crypto Rundown. So we had a great conversation with Mr. Tim McCourt from CME, who runs all the crypto products over there on our TWIFO program last week. So some of you may have missed that. So maybe we'll cut that in to the end of this episode this week so you guys can get a taste of what's going on on the micro Bitcoin and micro Ether options side, because those are listing Pretty much right now, as we speak, they listed today. So it should be interesting stuff. We'll get a little bit of a deeper dive into those. So stay tuned for that after the show. A little bit of a bonus for all of you folks out there. Speaking of bonuses, if you guys want to go above and beyond, you're enjoying this program, you want to see what's going on on the Secret Club side of the network, you want to join us live for this show, for everything else we do throughout the week. And also, of course, get access to all of those great exclusive shows like tomorrow for all of you crypto folks. We got Mr. Eric Kobalak joining us in the Pro Q&A hot seat tomorrow. He's been on this show a few times. Now going to answer all of your questions about all things Bitcoin, crypto, volume, volatility, all that good stuff, and a whole bunch more. So if you're in that secret club, get those questions in now. Should be an interesting one. And if you haven't joined yet, theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. You get access to all of those as well as all of our options oddities, all the giveaways, all the other fun stuff. There's always new and evolving stuff. We're always looking at interesting new things behind the scenes. So. There's new wrinkles always in the planning and in the offing for the secret club. Where do you go to find more? Theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. Meanwhile, it is time for us to commence our journey. It is time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. 
It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. All right, everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down all the action in the world's leading digital asset. Yes, we're talking about the big dog, which is Bitcoin. A little bit bigger this week than it was this time last week. In fact, a lot bigger. On our last show, we were just north, four handles north of the 41,000 level out there. This week, a little bit north of that, listeners. 47,693 is where we're coming in at the start of the show right now for Bitcoin. We had a high earlier this morning of about 47,745. In fact, I do feel like Bitcoin is feeling its luster. Even again, yes, since we have commence the show here it's at about 47,900 right now so threatening the 48,000 level and our low for the week well pretty much it was our show time last week it was 41,000 was the was the low pretty much <laughs> for the week out there right around that level so quite the range there 6,700 handles roughly over the course of the past week so a lot of movement that's why Twifo was in our movers and shakers report on our excuse me that's why Bitcoin was on our movers and shakers report on the TWIFO program last week as well. Again, if you're not listening to that show, you're listening to this show, you might want to check it out. We do delve into crypto more often than not over there. And coming into the start of the show here, VolWise, by the way, all these analytics coming at you, courtesy of our friends over there at Genesis Volatility, GVOL, G-V-O-L, is the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. If you are even remotely intrigued, by these markets, there really aren't many places you can go to learn more in terms of analytics and skew all the cool metrics we talk about here on the show these days. What's actually trading on these venues? Gvol.io is pretty much one of the only places to go to learn about all that stuff. So kick the tires and light the fires. Tell me you learned about them on the show. They'll be super enthused, super excited over there at Genesis Volatility. Speaking of said vol, it continues to erode. We were talking about the banishing the vanishing Bitcoin vol on the show last week. And it continues to vanish. It was a 66 on our last show after having dropped 10 points last week. Not quite as precipitous of a vol drop this week, but still coming off down to another four points. Is that about a 62 when we kicked off the show again today? So everyone out there who's persisting in this notion that Bitcoin is the most volatile asset on the planet and it can rock it all over the place, it certainly has moments that's why we do see it in our movers and shakers a lot over there on Twifo. But the overall volatility has drifted lower, substantially lower for quite some time out there. We're no longer threatening those triple digit levels out there anymore. We're seeing something similar out there on our friend Simon Ho's measure of Bitcoin volatility, which he calls BitVol, which a lot of people like to call or the Bitcoin VIX. It's effectively what it is. It's the same calculation methodology that he uses for spikes, which is analogous to VIX on the S&P 500. He uses that for Bitcoin vol as well. And that gets you bit vol, which last show was a 76. Still frothy, this time 65. So coming closer to our measure of the average vol that we pull from the folks over there at Genesis. Remember, bit vol, a little bit different. It takes kind of a rolling 30 day at the money implied measure, incorporates a little bit of skew in there as well. Any of that doesn't make any sense to you listeners, then check out our educational programming on the network. Options Bootcamp, very popular show. A lot of you folks like that, as well as Options Playbook Radio. Those two. We'll get you up to speed. So when I throw out terms like that, you'll know what the heck we're talking about. Speaking of skew, not really a huge change out there. A little bit more negative this week than last week, which is interesting given the fact that we have rallied substantially in both Bitcoin and ETH over the course of the past week. Last show, Bitcoin skew was at about a negative 1.3, so slightly negative. This week, about a negative 2. So a little bit more negative, but again, we're not talking a huge evolution same thing going on with Simon's bit skew. He takes that measure of skew, looks at it over a rolling 30-day period. Same thing. And it's pretty much unched. Last week was a 92, this week a 92 and a half. So we haven't seen a huge evolution in the skew, which again is interesting given the fact that we have seen a pretty sizable move in Bitcoin over that time. Again, usually when we see a protracted period of sell-off, that's when we see the puts start to get a little bit juicier, a little bit more interesting. People start to flock into them. The OI tends to grow. When we're rallying, we see the puts kind of come off. We see people lose their interest in puts. So let's see if that's the case right now from an overall OI perspective. It seems like pretty much uh, options are kind of just rolling off across the board this week. A lot of OI coming off here as we have some options expiration in March taking a lot of paper with it. 
In particular, let's, let's start with the calls over there on Darabit. There's only 101,000 contracts open on the call front right now. That's down 26,000 from this time last week. Again, usually we're seeing a nice rally in Bitcoin. You're going to see those calls start to grow in OI. But again, a lot of those expirations taking a lot of paper with it. Same thing on the put side. Puts 49,000 contracts open. That's down about 12,000 from this time last week. So OI kind of coming in. It's not quite a December moment again where we saw half of the OI roughly go the way of the dodo. But we are seeing a lot of paper go off with that March expiration. Speaking of March expiration, let's see where you folks are lining up now. March is off the board. So let's see once we re-rack the numbers how you folks are lining up from an expiration perspective. And it still is kind of quarterlies leading the dance. June is number one now with 46,000 contracts open. That's up about 4,000 from this time last week, followed by number two, April. So the first non-quarterly sneaking in there in a while. April, 26,000 contracts. That's pretty much unchanged from this time last week. So not a lot of change really going on over there. And then September, bringing up the rare there with 20,000 contracts. That's a newcomer to the top three. That has replaced March, but obviously it's got a long way to go to catch up there. Let's look at where you folks are shaping up right now, where you folks are positioning from an options strike perspective. Where are the size positions in Bitcoin options right now? Let's find out. Again, it's a little bit of change this week as we've seen some OI rolling off the board. Let's start at the bottom here and work our way to the top. Number five in terms of the size positions in Bitcoin options right now is on the 30,000 strike with 7,300 contracts open right now. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. And now pretty deeply in the money strike out there. That's kind of interesting. That's actually down 3,700 contracts from this time last week. So call wise in the money, obviously some puts open on that strike as well. Uh, Obviously, either way, no matter what's open on that strike, we're seeing a little bit of paper coming off there. Nearly 4,000 contracts rolling off the board this week with March expiration. Number four, the 80,000 strike, a newcomer to our top five with about, oh, about 7,500 contracts there this time this week. So quite a jump from 30,000 to (laughs) 80,000. Then we come back down a little bit to the 70,000 strike for number three. That's got about 8,800 contracts open right now. That's down almost a thousand from this time last week. Number two, the 50,000 strike with 13,000 contracts open. That's down about 4,000 from this time last week. And the number one size position in Bitcoin options right now in Darabit, the 60,000 strike that has Approximately 15,000 contracts open there. That's down about 1,000 from this time last week. So overall, pretty much OI down across the board in all the top positions. But interesting to note, the 60,000 strike maintaining its chokehold there on the imaginations of Bitcoin options trader. It wasn't that long ago that we were north of that, listeners. So can we retest those levels, get up to those highs around 66, 67,000 in that range? We shall find out, listeners. Let's get on out now to the volume see what's been lighting it up over the past week. And this last week, kind of in line with what we've seen for the pretty much the better part of the last month. Not a ton of paper, but not nothing either. Kind of just continuing to chug along out there. 23,000 contracts was the biggest day this past week. And that's pretty much almost exactly in line with what we saw this time last week, which was about 23,000 contracts. Almost exactly in line with what we saw the week before. Also 23,000. A little bit more, about 25,000 on March 1st. We got to go all the way back to pretty much exactly a month, February 24th, to find another day that was more active. That was February 24th with about 28,500 contracts. Even then, not a ton more. Really, you got to go all the way back to another month beyond that to January 24th to get the most active day we've seen this year. That's 37,000 contracts on Darabit. Nothing really approaching that this week as we keep on rolling. Let's get away from Darabit. Let's get on out to CME. Again, stay tuned after the show listeners for that segment for all of you who missed it on our TWIFO program sitting down with Tim McCourt from CME to break down what's going on and all these CME crypto products in a little bit more detail what are they launching what are they going to look at other altcoin out there what else do they have on their radar for CME crypto stay tuned you're going to hear that in a little bit but right now CME Bitcoin options actually doing some paper this past week which again if you've been listening to this show for a while you know they've kind of struggled to find their footing out there from a volume perspective We saw about 235 going up on Friday. That's actually a lot for that product. Again, 5X multiplier. That's a big, beefy contract. As Bitcoin continues to go up, it gets pretty beefy. 5X on Bitcoin. So seeing almost 250 going up, that's actually a lot. The OI also ticking up almost 360 contracts to about 2260 out there. So starting to see a little bit more OI out there in Bitcoin options. Again, it's not a ton, but 
any small amount of paper out there is really is really notable. And in terms of the futures, they're kind of holding steady right now. Again, same deal. Big, beefy contract right now. And as Bitcoin continues to tick up, it becomes a little bit less approachable for people. About 7,000 trading on Friday. The OI pretty much hanging out still at 12,000. No real changes there on the Bitcoin futures front. But you know where the action and the interest is right now is on the micro side because that's where they're adding all the new stuff. Micro Bitcoin futures trading up on Friday, about 17, almost 18,000 going up. Not the most active day we've seen out there, but a decent day nonetheless. Uh, the OI also ticking up quite a bit since our last show. It's added about 12,000 contracts, or so roughly a third. The OI now about 34,000 contracts out there. So seeing a decent amount of OI. And again, that's understandable. We're getting the options today as we speak. So be interesting. We'll have some final numbers for us on our next week's show in terms of how these micro options are actually trading. But you want to see a healthy ecosystem of futures in order to maintain some decent options markets out there as well. Are you guys intrigued? By the micro options, I know for a lot of you, probably the number one question we've received from all of you out there since this show has begun, <laughs> since it launched years ago now, is really, where can I trade these things? You know, you hear about Deribit, but for most of you out there who are in the U.S. listening audience, Deribit's a no-go, a non-starter for you. So where else can you go? We've had Ledger X on here in the past. Their use case was kind of limited, but hey, that FTX acquisition kind of changes the game. In fact, we're going to be bringing those folks back on sometime in the near future to hear more about their plans and what they're offering. So the former Ledger X, now FTX US derivatives, it may be a growing option for you folks out there, pun intended. But the other clear option is obviously what CME has to offer. Now it's futures and futures options. So that may be off-putting for some of you out there. But again, as we mentioned in our discussion with Tim, they are cash settled. You're not getting physically settled contracts. So that could be a boon for a lot of you out there. You don't have to worry about settling into Bitcoin or ETH. And also, it's a venue most of you have at least heard of. It's not going to go away tomorrow. So that's certainly a plus for a lot of you. And also the fact for some of you out there, I mean, I know central clearing is kind of anathema to the core ethos of crypto. But from a financial products perspective, a lot of you want that. You want to have a product that someone is standing behind and there's no counterparty risk. You don't want that. And that's what you're getting with these products. So for those of you out there who that's important to you, then CME might be an interesting one. And you finally have options unintended out there. So interesting stuff. We'll get to the micro ETH in a little bit. In fact, let's just dive right into it now because it is time for the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, everybody, let's do it. Let's dive right on into the altcoin universe. Again, kind of a, a strong tick up across the board here. Let's go out to the number two. Actually, before we get there, let's break down the top 10 out there in terms of market cap. Standard caveat applies. Take these market caps with a pretty hefty grain of salt. But the rankings, I think, are where the value lies. Number 10, still Avalanche holding on. Is me going to launch an Avalanche future sometime in the near future? I may have put that to Tim on our show last week, so. Stay tuned for that if you want to hear his answer to all that. <laughs> Number 10, Avalanche. You can tell by my laughter. Maybe not so much, but we shall see. $25 billion for Avalanche. Number 10. Number 9, good old Luna. $35 billion, 35, Almost $35.5 billion. Uh, number 8, we've got Solana. $36 billion. Number 7, Cardano. $41 billion. Number 6, we've got uh, XRP. Again, you know, everyone's still waiting. It seems like we are approaching some sort of conclusion in this long-standing drama with XRP. Folks just want an answer one way or the other. Can you trade it? Can you not? Is it a security? Is it not? One way or the other, some sort of closure to this would be nice so folks can either trade it or move on with their lives. <laughs> right now, we're still living in this limbo, $42.5 billion worth of market cap still. But for a lot of you, that's kind of meaningless because it's not available on most of the U.S. venues you guys like to trade on. So it's kind of just a wait and see right now. Number five, USD coin, 52 billion. Number four, good old BNB, 72.3 billion. Number three, it's Tether, 81 and a half billion. Number two, you know what it is. It's ETH. Number one in a lot of your hearts, 406 billion. Number one, looking a little bit firmer this week, 904 billion for Bitcoin. So closing back in on that 1T level. Speaking of closing in, ETH. Just closing in on some impressive levels here. Just rampaging back up well north of the 3,000 level. On our last show, we were at about 2919 
we got uh, a wee bit below that <laughs> in the interim there, but got as high as pretty much today, about 33.91. That was this morning, I think, with the high for the week. So we have seen quite the run in ETH over the course of the past week out there. So nothing to sneeze at out there. All you ETH bulls who are maybe getting a little concerned when we started to test the low 2000s level out there, back over a 3000 level right now. In terms of vol, though, not seeing the vol ticking up, it's kind of the same story we're seeing in Bitcoin, ticking off again, down another five points, 74 on our last show, 69 on this show. Similar story from a skew perspective as well, not a huge evolution out there. Negative 3.6 on our last show, negative two. So like Bitcoin, still negative bias, but not a huge real change or strong bias really one way or the other. Let's look what happened out here from an OI perspective. Again, like we saw in Bitcoin, March taking a lot of paper with it. It's more pronounced even in ETH because ETH has always been quarterly dominated from the outset, really. Every cycle, doesn't matter when you're looking, most of the top positions are going to be in those quarterly expiration months. So when March goes away, takes a whole pile of OI with it. And that's pretty much what we saw out here. Right now in Deribit, there's about exactly a million contracts open. That's down a whopping 400,000 from this time last week. So a ton of paper. Coming off the board over there on Deribit. Surprisingly enough, only 32,000 puts. So all of the action on Deribit recently was in the calls. And a lot of that went the way of the Dodo. Puts 545,000 open down about 32,000 this week. So still roughly in that two to one calls over puts range that we've been hanging out in for quite some time. Let's go out to the most active days out here. And again, it's kind of a, a similar story to the paper we saw recently, right around a little bit north of the 200,000 contract level, which is, again, a level we've been hanging out at for a while. Last week was 199,000. The week before, 204,000 contracts. So again, you got to go back pretty far. You got to go back pretty much that same day, January 24th, to find a meaningful divergence from that. That was around 402,000. Again, nowhere near that this week in terms of where you folks are lining up from an expiration perspective and ETH options right now. I think you can probably guess when March goes the way of the dodo that June takes over for it. June number one right now, 484,000 contracts managed to actually gain on the week up about 10,000. So we obviously a lot of new positioning in June to make up for what went away in March, April actually sneaking into number two, which is a little bit interesting with 270,000 contracts. That's up a whopping 34,000 from this time last week. So April slotting in firmly at number two. And then bringing up the rare September, a new addition to our top three this week with only 209,000 contracts. But it's young. It's new. Give it time. You folks love a quarterly and ETH options. I expect that one to probably overtake April sometime in the near future. Let's see where you folks are lining up from a top position perspective right now. And overall, in ETH options right now, I'll start from the bottom and work our way up. The number five size position in ETH options right now is the 6,000 strike. It has 66,000 contracts open. That's a newcomer to our top five. I haven't seen that one in a little bit. Number four, we have the 10,000 strike. So we jump from 6,000 strike to 10,000 with 75,000 contracts open, even though that's down 24,000. So a lot of that quote-unquote optimistic paper I always talk about here in ETH options a lot of that going away with March expirations. People were looking at 10K by March. That's a, that's a long road to run. Uh, 24,000 contracts coming off the board on the 10K strike. Still 75,000 open there, so still good for a number four spot. Number three, we're jumping up even farther to the 20,000 strike. That still has 99,000 contracts open, even though that's down 12,000 from this time last week. So there were a lot of, shall we say, optimistic <laughs> positioning a lot of optimistic positioning out there in eth options over the course of the past few months again we don't know the overall direction or what they had going on whether it was verticals whether they were opening buys or sells that put on and established those positions but still overall when we see a lot of positioning in the upside in a lot of these names especially given the way crypto options trade tends to be mostly buying in a lot of these strikes so intriguing stuff nonetheless number three twenty thousand strike down 12,000 to 99,000 contracts. Number two, a strike that is a wee bit more relevant, the 5,000 strike that has 103,000 contracts open right now. That one's down a whopping 29,000 contracts in this time last week. So a lot of paper coming off the board in March on the 5K strike. Surprisingly enough, the 4,000 strike, a now 
pretty much close to, not quite. <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Not quite the at-the-money strike yet, but it's getting a lot closer this week than it was last week. The 4K strike has 126,000 contracts open. That is the number one size position in ETH options right now. It's down only 3,000. So obviously a lot came off the board with March expiration, but obviously some new positioning coming in to replace that, only down 3,000. We're not seeing it coming off 30,000 or 25,000 or what we're seeing in some of these other strikes out there. So interesting stuff. The top of the ETH ladder right now are two strikes that are, dare I say it, a wee bit more relevant than some of the stuff we used to see out here in some of these products. In terms of CME getting back out there again, ETH futures, a lot of people are looking at these because they want to see what's up for the micro ETH options that are launching today. The big dog ETH futures kind of holding firm. The OI is up to about 4,000 contracts, up about 700 contracts from this time last week. We saw a similar number trading about 3,500 on Friday. The ETH futures have kind of been holding steady out there. Like we said, the story really is in the micro products that it just launched on December 6th. To my knowledge, this is the fastest turnaround we've ever seen from CME from launching a new underlying to getting an option on it. You're talking from December 6th to March 28th. Again, doesn't sound like it's lightning fast, but from the world of CME, <laughs> that's that's turning the Titanic around in a few seconds. So that's, that's impressive. Uh, the OI ticking up out there quite a bit as well, maybe... A lot of folks getting excited by the launch of the options. It's ticked up 8,500 contracts to 33,500. We saw another 22,500 trading on Friday. So, yeah, to say folks are interested in these micro ether products, <laughs> that is a bit of an understatement. In fact, more micro ether futures trading on Friday than micro Bitcoin, about 5,000 more. So, folks are fired up for all things micro at CME. Again, stay tuned. After the show, we'll, for all you on-demand folks, we'll tap on and append on there my conversation with Tim McCourt, who runs all these products over there at CME. So you can hear from the horse's mouth exactly what is going on, what you can look forward to from a product perspective out there. Let's get on out to some of the other altcoin out here today. Right now, XRP, like we said, still holding firm at about 88, almost 89 cents. That puts it up a little over 6 cents from this time last week. It was about 82 and a half cents on our show. So it has managed to tick up even with all these swords of Damocles hanging over it. Are you folks intrigued by XRP? Or have you kind of just washed your hands of it? I mean, it's kind of been sitting in the doghouse for quite some time now. I understand if you have moved on to other things, uh, but it's an intriguing one. Nonetheless, uh, Dogecoin, 15 cents this week, 15.1 cents. Quite the run for the old doggy coin. I was a little bit shy of 12 cents on our last show. So up a whopping 3.1 cents. We got some Doge Lambos in the near future. <laughs> We shall see Litecoin at about 130, almost 131 when we kicked off the show. That's quite the leap. It was 116 and a quarter on our last show. Puts it up almost 15 handles, about 14 and three quarters points. Uh, Cardano also getting quite the lift. It was 91 cents on our last show, 122 this week, up a whopping 30 cents. That's a huge move for Cardano. Polka dots, same deal, 1887 on our last show, 2281. On this show, so up almost four bucks on the week. Solana, this is another one that's kind of been just moving quite a bit of late. 88.12 on our last show, 111 on today's show, up nearly 23 handles on the show. Unfortunately, Shiba Inu not really catching all that love, only up a whopping point oh 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 six <laughs> since our last show. So it doesn't seem like the Shiba Lambos are on the docket for this week. Well, who knows? Maybe next week out there, listeners. All right, that's going to do it for this Just the Facts, ma'am, edition of the Crypto Rundown. Remember, we'll be back right immediately after this show. Just keep listening on this episode if you want to hear all the details on those new products coming out. Pretty much listing as we speak right now over there at CME, Micro Bitcoin, Micro ETH Options. Also, if you're not in the secret club yet and you like crypto, you're probably going to want to join us tomorrow. We're going to have Eric Kovalak from Vellum Capital joining us on the hot seat tomorrow to answer all of your questions about all things crypto and volatility and a whole bunch of other great stuff. That should really be a fun one. His first time in the hot seat. So that should really be fascinating. Theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club is the place to go to join that session if you are so inclined. That also gives you access to all the other ones we've ever done, all the options oddities, as well as all the live stuff throughout the week, giveaways, and a whole bunch more. Of course, coming back at you tomorrow also with the advisor's option. So you get the rare two for Tuesday tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. That should be fun. As well as, of course, 
double dose of education Wednesday, options boot camp, options playbook radio. I've said it before. I will say it again. If you're not listening to those shows and you're new to this options thing, you definitely should. It will help you in the long run to understand these markets and these products in much more detail. Thursday, we have this week in futures options and in some regards, a sister show to this one, as well as, of course, episode two of the option block Friday volatility views where we get into all the world of broad equity volatility in a lot of details if you like us talking about crypto vol here you definitely going to check out volatility views every friday and of course after that for all you secret club cool kids we have options oddities and we're back again next monday another episode of the crypto rundown stay safe out there everybody it's time to explore the volatile world of bitcoin ether and more it's time to talk about crypto all right, everybody, welcome to the crypto segment. Haven't had a chance to really sink our teeth into this one too much of late because we've been waiting for some new stuff to come down the pike. And I am very pleased to say we are now joined by our guest this week in the CME group hot seat, our good friend over there, Mr. Tim McCourt, the managing director and global head of equity products over there at CME group. He also moonlights in a little bit of crypto, Mr. Tim Welcome back to Twifo, sir. It has been too long. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great to be here. Tim, you know I like when you join us on the show because that usually means you've got some cool new products in your hot little hand, sir. Is that the case again this week? That is the case. Uh, come on, come Monday, we'll be introducing micro Bitcoin options and micro Ether options at CME, which we're very excited about. Well, yes, those are the options that a lot of people have been waiting for and our audience have been asking about. I mean, the big stuff is fun. The big stuff is fine for the institutions and for the ETFs to come in and issue their contracts and shares against. But for a lot of our audience, they're really intrigued by the micro stuff. It seems like it was forever ago that you launched micro Bitcoin, but it was it was less than a year ago, which it seems crazy now. And then, of course, the micro ether. Far more recent than that, it was December 6th, that I do recall, so only a few months ago for the micro ether futures. And now, Tim, you know, I've asked you this, I don't know how many times, when are we going to get the options? When are we going to get the options? You finally now are granting the wishes of our audience. So again, let's, let's break it down a little bit. Let's talk about the contracts, the specs. What can people expect from you guys coming soon on the micro crypto front, sir? Absolutely. And, you know, Mark, to your point, we launched micro Bitcoin. Uh, last year in May, and that's traded over 4.7 million contracts on the futures, which is amazing. And, and MicroEther launching in December, already trading over 1.2 million futures contracts. So, I mean, that's that's amazing when you think about it. Uh, and certainly really excited now for the uh, the micro crypto options to come online. And similar to the micro futures, it's one tenth of the token. So one tenth of one Bitcoin is one tenth of one Ether. These are options on futures. So they, the, the underlying is the micro Bitcoin and the micro Ether future. Uh, when we look at the expiration, the other thing I'm really excited about is unlike the, the BTC options that are out there, which are just the, the last Friday of the month that coincide with futures, here on the micro Bitcoin and micro Ether futures, we're going to have the, ne the nearest Monday, Wednesday, and Friday contracts. So we have the, the weekly Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We're also going to have four Friday contracts in the market at once, and then the two nearest uh, monthly contracts that line up with the, the first two futures contracts. Uh, so that's exciting, you know, combining not only micros, but Mark, as you know, everyone loves short dated options. Uh, so combining two things that people love, or I guess three things that people love, crypto, short dated options, and micros, right? All wrapped up in one. Uh, the tick size on the micro Bitcoin will be $5 per Bitcoin. Uh, and on the ether, it'll be, you know, 50 cents per ether in terms of the, the tick size, just like the future. Uh, and they, they go live on Monday. So we're, we're super excited. Uh, I really hope that the, they're as successful as their future, uh, you know, underlying and, and just really excited to get these out for the market. People have wanted them for a, a long time. Wow. Sounds like we're going to have an embarrassment of expiration soon, Tim. Almost a daily expiration going in uh, in crypto pretty soon, sir. Taking what you've learned in equities and applying it to the crypto, I see. That's right. You know, I mean, I think especially when we look at crypto, uh, it, it's people love to trade this market. Uh, they they are always interested in precision around their, their their trading strategies, and that was something we heard loud and clear from customers is that they wanted, you know, 
something a few days out. They wanted that Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They wanted to try the trade the, the Friday weekly options. Uh, they didn't want to just necessarily trade that monthly contract. Uh, so I think this will give them a, a tremendous amount amount of flexibility when they're trying to deploy their strategies or do some spread trades. Uh, and you know, it's sometimes you just got to give the crowd what they want. Well, the last time we chatted, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but it actually was back on December 9th. It was right after the launch of the micro ether option. So it's actually been a little while since you and I have chatted. You know, I was excited for the micro ether, but I was, I have to admit, a little bit surprised at just how aggressively people really adopted these things. Those futures were, were doing a pretty decent ADV pretty quickly right after that December 6th launch. Were you surprised at that, Tim, or you think maybe now that you've built up this ecosystem? of crypto offerings over there at CME. People now kind of know what to look for, what to expect, and they're a little bit more, shall we say, quick to pull the trigger on some of the new products when you guys list them. I think that's right. So, I mean, to, to a certain extent, I wasn't surprised because we had heard so much demand for the micro ether future contract. But, but you know, to an extent, the fact that it's now doing 21,000 contracts a day here in 2022 and also has its own, you know, an open interest of almost 40,000 contracts, uh, that, that's tremendous. You know, micro Bitcoin is also trading about 21,000 contracts. So I think, Mark, your intuition is correct where now that this is the micro ether was the fourth crypto future at CME, people are quicker to adopt. They're already in micro Bitcoin or the bigger Bitcoin or ETH contracts. Uh, so it's just an easier step for them to trade micro ether. Uh, and they, they got right into it, you know, now trading you know, 20,000, 21,000 contracts a day, which is great to see. Yeah, we certainly see this as well from our, our crypto program. There is just this strong audience of people. They really like themselves some ether. It's number two from a market cap perspective, but it's number one in the hearts I know of a lot of the audience. So maybe in retrospect, not quite as surprising to see so many people embracing the micro ether, but still always interesting to see. And this has to be, Tim, to my recollection, the fastest turnaround we've ever seen. December 6th, you launched the futures on micro ether. And we're getting the options on what, March 28th? That's, that's certainly, I mean, how long did I have to bug you just to get Bitcoin options? A couple of years, right? <laughs> so <laughs> you're making my job easier here, Tim. Yeah. I like it. That's right. You know, a couple, a couple of years and a, co- a couple of conferences mixed in there, uh, you know, to get, to get the Bitcoin options. But, you know, it really comes down to, to client demand. Uh, and, there, you know, I've said on other shows too, Mark, there, there's no magic number uh, that we wait for before we introduce options on, on futures. We just want to make sure the futures market has its own, uh, you know, it comes into its own right, so to speak, in terms of liquidity provision, ability to absorb uh, the risk transfer and, and the price discovery process. So there needs to be a, an element of robustness in the future before we overlie options on those futures. Uh, and might agree that it got there pretty quick. Uh, you know, you, you know it when you know it. And, it, 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 you know, even though we, we didn't publicly announce that we knew MicroEther was going was to be on the fast follow, given the success of the futures. Uh, and also with micro Bitcoin, you know, the feedback we've gotten is just making it that smaller size, more more right size contract at one tenth of the token. It makes it easier to trade for folks. It lines up with what some people are doing on the overseas platforms or the unregulated platforms. So we're also interested now of just bringing that style of trading to CME where the people love to trade crypto futures. Uh, and now we're, we're hoping they're going to love to trade the micro crypto options as well. Well, you mentioned the conference scene. I myself did not go down to FIA Boca this year. It's one of the first years outside of the pandemic start that I really haven't gone. I know for a fact you were down there, Mr. Tim. I saw you quoted in a few articles because it seems like all the talk this year was about crypto down at the FIA. It seems like you were the bell of the ball, Tim. Was that surprising to you that everyone and their mother at FIA wanted to talk crypto? You must have been the the go-to guy in demand, Tim. Yeah, you know, crypto is certainly a topic at Boca, like it is everywhere. People can't get enough of crypto. Uh, you know, they also, down at Boca, you know, it was not just crypto. Uh, everyone also wanted to talk about my, my other favorite products, micro e-minis, and those are doing well. It's all sorts of great things coming out of CME. Uh, you know, we, we recently announced that we're going to be introducing event contracts in the third quarter of this year, you know, right before Boca. So we had lots of great things to talk about. Uh, crypto is always exciting, uh, but, you know, Plenty, plenty of good old-fashioned futures talk as well down at FIA. Uh, we'll get to the equity stuff in a second. Before we dial out of uh, all things crypto, I'm just looking at the numbers right now. One of the ongoing discussions you and I have been having for a while, ever since I, I finally forced you single-handedly to launch the Bitcoin options, is like, you know, when are they going to start ticking up in volume? We saw a decent decent volume so far this week, 436. Again, doesn't sound like a lot, listeners, but for this product, it's actually a pretty decent amount. Remember, that's a 5x 
multiplier. Everyone's really been waiting for a more bite-sized contract. It seems like this is the product they have been waiting for. We should see more more interest in that on March 28th. But I'm curious for you, Tim, do you expect a little bit of overlap? You know, whenever you have one hit product, it usually tends to drive some volume in another. Do you think if we get an aggressive uptake on these micros that that will translate into some more paper in the original mothership options on Bitcoin as well? I do. You know, I mean, it's tough to say what, what the knock-on effect will be, but I think if we can get market participants to start with the micro size contract, I think that'll naturally uh, generate more interest in its older sibling, the 5X options on futures for BTC. Uh, I still think those are great and right size for institutions. And, you know, so, you know some, some retail traders and active traders may, may, may find that size attractive because it lines up with the, the big BTC future. Uh, but I would expect if we can get some some paper going in the micro size contract, that you're gonna you're gonna get some risk off lays into the bigger contracts. You may get people spreading between the two. Uh, so it'll be interesting to watch the development. Uh, tough to say, you know, the crystal ball isn't working so well today. Uh, but I am hopeful that the success will transfer to the big contracts as well. It's like you folks have a lot of questions as well. So let's get to some of those now. A little bit of the old futures options feedback. It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for Futures Options Feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, stocktwits.com slash options insider, or via questions at the options You can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider Radio Network mobile app. Available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at Mixler.com. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com. To some of your feedback, it's like, Tim, we got a lot of questions for you coming in. Our live chat certainly seems excited about the uh, the micro bitcoin options here tim so you've certainly you've certainly awakened our live listeners which is good to see out there all right let's go on out first before we get some of the live let's pay off some of the questions we asked you last week we asked you a pretty contentious question we said if you had to buy one option one option only on wti so a crude oil option that expires at the end of the year which would you choose the december 115 call or the one excuse me the 85 put when we posted that WTI was hovering right around 100, so it was pretty much equidistant to both. And that was reflected in the results. I've never seen a poll result like this in all the years that we've been doing this with our audience. Exactly split, exactly 50% each for the 115 call and the 85 put, which is A, fascinating, never seen that before, and B, reflects that there is a little bit of ambiguity in that marketplace right now, which makes an interesting market. So, yeah, you folks are on both sides. I probably would have chosen the... The 85 side, but, uh, you know, to each their own out there. That's certainly, it's hard to argue against the upside this week. That's for sure. Uh, A lot of people chimed in on this, like Sebastian. He said, I would say the 115 call easily, but I would execute it in very late Q3 or early Q3. Uh, Realistically, the demand will be less in Q4 and the world crude oil output will be on par. A lot of people pointed that out. The seasonality of crude is kind of interesting and probably plays a a role in this. Ozzy made a similar comment. He said, I would like the AUG 85 put. So he's on the other side. He says, because crude oil goes down around the 4th of July week. So he's also playing it. But from the other side, because also of the seasonality again, which is kind of interesting. So a lot of uh, comments from you folks out there. But let's get to some of the questions we have now, uh, Tim, from our live listeners about your micro offerings. Let's start with PL Man. I know you just hit on this earlier, Tim. I think maybe PL Man might have come in late to the chat. So he missed it, but... I know you're not going to be mad to have a chance to repeat yourself on these because these products are going to be interesting for a lot of people. PNL man wants to know what choices do I have for duration of the micro Bitcoin options? He prefers short durations. As we were joking earlier, Tim, you got almost every day of the week now in the crypto space. So why don't we run it down really quickly again for PNL man, everyone else who might've missed it. What can I look at from an expiration perspective in the crypto offering, sir? Absolutely. The micro crypto options will have, the nearest Monday and Wednesday options, and it will have the four nearest Friday expirations. So think in the month, it's going to be weeks one, two, three, and four for Fridays. You'll always have the next Monday and the next Wednesday maturity to trade and the two uh, month end, the Friday month end that lines up with the futures expiration. So plenty of choices uh, in the market. uh, But again, the nearest Monday, Wednesday, 
for Fridays and then the two month end Fridays for that line up the futures. We got Nichols and Options Queen both in our chat saying both of them saying they're excited about the new micro Bitcoin option. So there you go, Tim. You got some converts here. <laughs> so you're going to have at least two contracts going up when you launch them on the 28th. That's right. So there you go. You're doing your duty for God and country out there. Uh, Frank, Frank has a little bit of a different question. He wants to know, can you take physical delivery of either Bitcoin or ETH at CME, Tim? What do you have to say for Frank? Yeah, so right now at CME, our products are financially settled. Uh, so the futures themselves settle against the Bitcoin reference rate and the Ether dollar reference rate. Uh, that's based on Bitcoin dollar fiat and Ether dollar fiat transactions from the five constituent exchanges, Bitstamp, ITBIT, Gemini, Coinbase, and Kraken. Uh, but no physical uh, delivery of Bitcoin or ETH at CME, uh, and, and we don't accept it as, as collateral or anything like that. So, so just a uh, financially settled option works the same way in your account that an e-mini S&P would, uh, just moving the dollars. That's an interesting question, actually, Tim. I'd like to get your thoughts on that for a second, just because we saw a lot of people try to launch in the last few years with a lot of fanfare the physically settled, physically delivered contracts in crypto. It seemed like there was a lot of interest in them early on because they certainly got a lot of headlines. And then when they materialized, they ended up doing a whole whopping heck of a lot of nothing. It seems like no one really was that interested. In it. In fact, we've had some venues on recently that offered some of those physically uh, delivered contracts, and they ended up seem like they're kind of pivoting away from that now. So I'm kind of curious for you as, as the crypto product guy over there at CME, do you think there is a lot of institutional demand for a physically delivered or settled contract? Or was that maybe maybe a lot of headlines, but not a lot of actual demand when you actually list the product? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, in, in our minds here at CME, we never, we never kind of see it as an either or choice. Uh, I think there is a need for physically settled products in the market. Uh, I think just when you look at the operational challenges that, that some firms face or individuals face in terms of custodying, operating a wallet, uh, you know, shorting, uh, this, you know, if you're on the short side of the market, you got to get secure borrow and stuff like that, which can be expensive uh, and cumbersome. So I think there's just some operational and logistical challenges that still make it uh, difficult for some folks. Uh, but I don't, I don't think it's an either or. We went with uh, financially settled because that's what we were hearing from customers at the time. It's also easier for us to bring that to market because we didn't have to uh, handle, you know, back in 2017, the custody solution was even more elusive than it is uh, today for some folks. Uh, so so we'll, we'll see. Uh, I think the one thing, though, is that when we look at the physical solution, the way that the, the market has developed, I think uh, the market is still figuring out what custody and storage means for itself. Uh, and I think that needs to be a, a bit more cemented in the marketplace. And there has to be flexibility in any type of offering that people could move between custodians and, and move these tokens around. There were still early days, I think, in some of that, uh, you know, from a, let's go from more of the institutional and the clearing member perspective. So those, those are a lot of things they still, still need to work on. Uh, time will tell. So maybe one day we'll have, we'll have the physical contract uh, that will be successful. Uh, but, but, you know, that, I think right now financially is just a lot easier for folks and it makes, and you get the same price exposure, which is great. Yeah, I kind of thought there would be a bit of a, a hit, and it turned out to uh, not really be much one one at all. So that's kind of surprised me. It certainly seemed like there might be a use case there. Certainly the covered call makes sense and maybe sell a put to get into some Bitcoin or ETH, but it didn't seem like that really resonated with the audience, which kind of surprised me. Speaking of the audience, we got some more coming at you here. Tim, let's go back out to the live. Nichols says he wants to know, Tim, he likes, he's excited about the micro Bitcoin and micro ETH, and he wants to know, are there any other crypto that interests Tim right now, sir? So I know you'd... You don't like to open the kimono too much, but you can maybe say, broadly speaking, are there any other maybe altcoin that are on the radar right now? Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin and Ether are certainly keeping us busy uh, right now. That's where our focus is. Uh, one of the things that you know, we're, we are looking at and we're always engaging with customers is keep in mind, we also have the, the reference rate products with our partner, CF Benchmark. Uh, so I'd say, you know, we're probably likely to, to look at some additional reference rates, um, you know, so, so stay tuned on that front. But on the product side, the tradable product side, uh, Bitcoin and ETH is, is keeping us plenty busy right now. So what I'm hearing, Tim, if I read between the lines there, is look for Avalanche futures coming soon from CME. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, you didn't hear me say that. You know, <laughs> Just reading between the lines. Just you guys talking. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I got I, I to keep it close to, the, close to the vest so I can get booked again on the show. I can't, I can't give too, away, too much yes, away. Sure. Right you got you know? to save some cards for your next <laughs> visit out there. Well, before we wrap things up, Tim, I, I want to get you... To play along in this one, we have another 
question of the week going on right now. It's kind of up your alley, Tim. You're the king of all things small over there at CME right now. Uh, we asked our audience this week. A lot of people, or I should say not a lot, some people refuse to trade options on quote-unquote cheap stocks or cheap underlines. Are you in that camp or will you trade options on anything? Quite simply, what is your cutoff point where the stock becomes too cheap to trade the options? We gave you a bunch of choices. Is it below $15? Is it below $10? Is it below $5? Or are you? do you have no limits because you're just a savage out there? Tim, I'm curious for you. If you have a, a personal cutoff that you think, you know, maybe if a stock or an underlying gets below 10 bucks, you don't trade options anymore. You think the underlying becomes more of an option or I should say, and then more importantly, what do you think our audience is voting for, Tim? So a twofer for you. Oh, it's a good question. You know, per, first, I, I think, you know, and before, I, you know, I was at the exchange as an equity trader. Uh, I, I think at a certain point, kind of below the $10 threshold, you know, to your point, Mark, it's like the, the stock itself is almost cheap enough to be an option. Um, you know, but the trading options are fun. So I think as long as it moves around, uh, you know, I, I might I might personally look at below the, the ten handle uh, as long as they're fun to to, to trade and, and keep things exciting. Uh, but knowing your your crowd, hmm, my guess is I think they'll trade anything. You know, I feel like everyone you know options enthusiasts. <laughs> You're saying they're a bunch of savages, with the Tim. Option insider, <laughs> you know, the words, not mine. I just think that, I think they'll trade anything. We actually do say that in the poll. We say no limits. You're a savage, and so that was the question. <laughs> And you are correct. You know our audience, Tim, because 40% of them saying they have no limits. They're a bunch of savages out there. If they see an option they like, they will trade it regardless of the price. Of the I was with you. I thought $10 would be a kind of a good line of demarcation, Tim, but apparently I'm alone because then right yeah. behind it was 28% for fifth, below $15, which seems kind of high to me, and then 24% for below $5, and only 8% said 10 bucks, Tim, so... That surprises me a little bit. The savagery does, I don't, doesn't surprise me. I know we have a lot of savages out there. But uh, below 15 bucks, that seems, I question that. I think you'll trade options. Uh, nonetheless, get out there at options. The clock is ticking, listeners. You have less than a day to play along in our question of the week. All right, everybody. That music means we come to the end of another epic journey through the world of futures options. We touched on a lot of, what did Tim call it? Micromania <laughs> this week. <laughs> I like that, Tim. I will be borrowing that, just letting you know now. So hopefully your licensing rates are pretty reasonable over there <laughs> at CME. I'm going to be doing a lot of micromania coming soon. But Mr. Tim, you touched on that, touched on all the micro stuff. You also hit on a little bit earlier some of these, uh, I don't know, event products you have coming up. Maybe leave, leave us with a tease of those, sir. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's super exciting. Uh, we're introducing event-based contracts. They're going to make it easier for everyone out there to trade their view on daily up-down price movements in some of the world's most trusted benchmarks that we have at CME. Uh, you know, these event contracts coming in Q3 are going to be contracts that include oil, gold, the four major equity index pro products, and some foreign currency. Uh, so they're really excited. They're, they're fully collateralized providing investors a simple, low-cost, and easy-to-use product to, to trade everyday markets with limited risk. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. And, and you know, stay tuned for more details. Uh, but Q3, we're targeting. And, we'll, you know, we'll share the launch date uh, when we have everything done and dusted on our end. That could be huge. A lot of people have been waiting for a big player to get into the event space. So, Tim, you could be kicking off. Is that going to be under your purview as well? Are you going to be crypto equities and events guy now? <laughs> you got the biggest. Well, no, four, <laughs> no, four, four of them are equities. And, uh, yeah. You know, wow. Too. So, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll how do you keep getting all the cool stuff at CME, Tim? What did you do over there? I don't understand. But, hey, it works out pretty yeah. well. <laughs> you have a guaranteed recurring seat on the show now. So I'm looking That's forward cool. to those. Q3, you said? That's right, Q3. Check them out, Q3. And, of course, coming up in just a few days now on the 28th, you guys can get your fill of hashtag micromania with the micro Bitcoin and micro Ether options. How long have we been bugging Tim for these options? Now, here they are. He's finally delivering for us out there. Pretty quick on the Ether side, only since December 6th for those. So check those out. And, of course, you know where to go to check out all these reports we talk about throughout the show, throughout the week. It's cmegroup.com slash twifo, T-W-I-F-O, or slash twifo. Both of those should work. If you want to check what's going on in heating oil options at 2 a.m. on a Sunday, we won't judge.
Judge, head on over. SeeMeGroup.com slash Trifle. Those reports are live all week long, not just during Showtime, listeners. And, of course, you know where to go to learn more about all things small caps. It's Footsie Russell, F-T-S-E, Russell.com. All of that one word there. Follow him. Give him a follow on the old Twitters as well, at Footsie Russell. Again, all one word. You can find all sorts of great data, small caps, where it says large caps, volatility, COVID impact, recon coming up. In fact, I may have a bit of a interesting working theory I have to put to those Footsie Russell folks about how that June 8th date, we, we talked about many times on some of our other shows the last couple of years, seems like it's the apex for the year for a lot of smaller names out there. Maybe it has something to do with recon. Perhaps we'll find out. FootsieRussell.com is the place to go to learn more. We have to get on out of here, but we'll be back again tomorrow, listeners, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern, breaking down the mad world of volatility. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun one. So join us for Volatility Views tomorrow. And after that, for all of you pro members, coming up 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern, exclusively for you, we break down the week that was in the world of unusual activity with options oddities. Did I get filled on those VRM puts? I guess we'll find out on tomorrow's show. And then, of course, back again next week, all the way through to another Thursday, another episode of This Week in Futures Options. Stay safe out there, everybody. This program is brought to you by Genesis Volatility, also known as GVOL, home of institutional grade crypto options analytics. Whether you're trading CFI options or DeFi options, cryptocurrencies move. Use GVOL Analytics to analyze implied volatility, model realized volatility, structure positions, and unlock alpha. For more information, visit gvol.io. That's G-V-O-L dot I-O. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>